Good morning. It's Thursday, May 7th, and it's time for your devotions this morning. We're going to be in 1 John chapter 1, verse 8. So if you want to get your Bibles out, 1 John 1, chapter 8. If you need to pause to do that, go ahead. Um, we have several things uh, happening today. You are starting a new section in um, history. And notice that page 225 is extra credit, and 226 is a study guide for the next chapter, chapter 15, and that's the post-war era, um, time right after World War II had occurred. And um, it uh, is also, yeah, it is a study guide for the test. And you also have in science a practice test to do and um, your quiz 13C, which on yesterday's video, I did give you the questions um, to be able to uh, study for that quiz. And so you'll want to uh, look at that one for those questions. Um, spelling trial test today. And so that's something exciting to look forward to. Um, and let's go ahead and get started then in 1 John 1, 8, and we're going to go into uh, 1 John 2, 2. So it says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, um, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. For, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. So, um, here we have uh, um, that word, a couple of words here that might be a little bit difficult to understand. In chapter 2, verse 1, it says advocate. Now, an advocate, and some of you did have that in your spelling, I think it was fifth grade spelling word. Uh, but an advocate is like a lawyer, somebody who stands for somebody else, represents them. Um, and it says, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. So with God, Jesus says, when we sin, Father, they're my, they're, I've died for them. I died for those sins. They've accepted me. They've accepted the work that I've done on the cross. And so they are fine as far as that sin is covered, that, that sin is, be, is paid for. And then the propitiation, which is a word that means a covering. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. You see, Jesus died for everybody, including those who aren't saved. He died for those sins as well. This is called the abscessed tooth. Casey carefully felt the funny little hole with his tongue. My mouth feels better, he told his mother, but my tongue won't stay away from the empty spot. What did you say was wrong with my tooth? I want to tell Grandma when she comes this afternoon. There was an abscess at the root of your tooth. Just, that's kind of like an infected sore, explained Mom. Since it was just a baby tooth, the dentist pulled it so the poisons could be cleaned out. When Grandma came that afternoon, Casey told her all about his tooth. He felt the empty spaces in the, in the front of his mouth where some of his other teeth were missing. Pretty soon I won't have any more teeth uh, than Missy, he said, pointing to his baby sister who was bouncing in her high chair. Grandma laughed. Your permanent teeth are almost, though, are almost through, she said. So it's good that the dentist pulled the bad one. If he hadn't taken care of it, it would have gotten worse. The poison from the abscess could have made you sick. She gently rubbed the side of Casey's face. You know, she said thoughtfully, I think I'll use your tooth as an illustration for my Sunday school class, okay? Okay, agreed Casey. You see, Grandma continued, sin, like lying or disobeying, is like an abscess tooth. We have to get rid of sin in our life or it gets worse. We need someone to clean it out and replace our bad thoughts with good ones, just like your bad tooth will replace with the good, uh, I'm sorry. We need someone to clean it out and replace our bad thoughts with good ones, just like your bad tooth will replace with a new good one. Jesus takes our sins away, doesn't he? asked Casey. He surely does, replied Grandma. We can't do it ourselves. We need to confess our sin to God to ask him to forgive us. Then he gets rid of it for us. She smiled at Casey. The dentist cleans out the abscess and Jesus cleans out the sin. Casey smiled, too. I'm sure glad someone's around to clean out both of them, he said. Uh, think about that for your own life, um, especially in uh, chapter 1, verse 9. It's very clear that uh, John here is writing. He says, um, well, starting in verse 8, it says, If we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So admitting that you have sin in the first place is a very important step. That's the most important step to begin with. Um, it says, though, in verse 9, If we confess our sins... That means to say the same thing about them that God does. So it's not a matter of, oh yeah, I have sin. Name them. Tell God about them. Tell God it, uh, about what you've done wrong. Tell him specifically about the things you've done wrong. 
you'd be surprised how good it feels to be able to confess to him. It's like those times when you're in trouble and you keep hiding something, keep hiding something, keep hiding something. Your parents finally find out and you're like, oh, I'm so glad it's out there. Even though I'm in trouble, I'm still so glad it's out there. I don't have to worry about covering it. I don't have to worry about trying to lie about it and, and lying on top of lies and top of lies and top of lies just to keep it covered. Um, it's so nice that it's out there and other people know about it, and, or at least my mom and dad know about it, and so I can be um, clear now. And, and that's the idea here. Um, it says that if we confess, if we say the same thing as uh, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That cleansing that we need is very important. Um, I would suggest that uh, if you have, if there's some sin in your life, look, when I was growing up, I remember there were secret sins that I had and there are secret sins that you have. And you'd be surprised. Um, yes, your parents might be disappointed if you're involved in some kind of a sin, especially if you've been deceiving them about it. But you know, they understand. They're sinners, too. They know how it is. Um, you may find that your parents did something similar to that you are doing as a child that they did as a child. Um, a lot of times we seem to inherit from our parents similar weaknesses that uh, are, are in our flesh. And I don't know if they're genetic or what, but uh, sometimes maybe I guess it could be training from the parents that is something that they they were trained by their parents and and, or just the weakness that um, each of us have, that it could be genetic, I guess, somehow. It is flesh, and so it's um, inherited um, physically, or can be, I would imagine it can be inherited physically, flesh is. And so um, don't be afraid to talk with them about some kind of a sin that you have, some kind of a weakness that you have, uh, where you're desiring to help. And then here's the, here's the thing that happens. We, we get it clear at that time. But then we go back to doing what we were doing before and then just start it all over again. And, and nothing's really changed. And, and, and the whole idea is that you're trying to learn. And, and your parents understand, well, at least I hope they would understand, uh, that you have a great opportunity to learn to not do it. You're, you're just not going to stop a sin and that's it and it's over with. Especially one that you've been doing your whole life or you've been doing for a long time. It just doesn't work that way. Our flesh is too powerful for us to, for us to overcome ourselves, um, and, and we need help. I mean, sometimes that means uh, our parents taking some kind of something away from us that would be a temptation. Sometimes it means that um, they ne need to help us to get organized or to get um, disciplined in some area of our life, whatever that area is that might uh, that would help us to keep from doing that sin again. But then when we do that sin again, because it will happen. Um, don't quit, because that's what Satan wants you to do. Satan wants you to give up, because he doesn't want you living for God, because if you live for God, you might have an influence in other people to be saved and to, be, to, and to live for God as well. And so you need to make sure that you are doing faithfully what you need to do for God. And, and then when you do sin, confess it again, and confess it to your parents again. Don't wait, don't uh, try to hide it, because all that leads to is more sin. Well, I hope that's an encouragement to you, and um, we'll go ahead and see you guys later today, and we'll have a, an enjoyable time together in math and language, and I hope you have a good uh, day. We'll see you later. Bye.